John Spritz here. I don't think so. Not that I know. So it's here. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. It's a previous meeting he was, but he wasn't at this last meeting. Who's that? Jonathan who is down the hall. I don't need nothing's not our last meeting. No. Now the meeting before that was. Yeah, this be October. No, the sheet. Yeah. No, that is reuse. That's what's one of the developer. Oh, through it. Yes. I'd say, how'd I miss that? No, I'm with you. Yeah. I just saw Jonathan and I saw the next word was P. And How are you? Want to give Lois a chance to meet me? <laughs> what are you doing, Kevin? You're late. You're late. Shoot, I'm early. <laughs> Bill already good, Florida? Yes. Go to the first one. Okay. Now, just yeah. Okay. She is. Now I'm going back. She is. We will move you about you, Randy. <laughs> 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 Good evening and welcome to the Grant County Board of Zoning Appeals meeting for November 6th, 2023. If you would take a minute and please silence your cell phones. And if you would join me 
in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and be seated. Watch that chair with that chair. It's a little three. That's the one I think I'll put the chair. I call out, pick me up. Okay, can we have a roll call for attendance, please? Atkins? Here. How? Yes. Johnson? Jones? Here. Long? Here. Pearson? Here. Hartman? Here. Okay. Moving on to approval of minutes for October 2nd, 2023. Do we have any additions or corrections that we need to make? I'll make a motion as they presented to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Mr. Long. I'll second. We have a motion to second by Mrs. Jones. Is there any discussion? Could we have a roll call vote, please? Atkins? Yes. Tao? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Motion passed. We have approval of findings of fact, JGB real estate. Now, I think you've pulled out what you had sent me. Yes, there was. Did you all get a handout? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I sent in my findings of fact based on what you all had discussed as I remembered it in the meeting. And uh, it's the second page of that little handout numbers one through four, and then you did a vote to deny the variance. So if you would, take a minute to look at those, and then we can discuss those. And Mr. Chairman. Yes. Also had a, a conversation with Mr. Glickfield on on the finding. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted him to to expound a little bit tonight on on finding the facts. What we need to be seeing uh, a reminder that if they would file a lawsuit against us for that decision, you're finding the facts are what is our defense. Correct. Correct. So, uh, you guys are ready for it. But I just I thought maybe he could explain a little bit better, you know, what we what we need to see. In yeah, finding facts. I think we could move that up. It's on the agenda. Would you like to uh, sure expand so, on that? Sure, happily. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but you're under the area of law called administrative law, like Social Security, workers' comp, 
BZA rulings. So what that means is when you issue an order, which is what your findings of facts are, in your particular case, your order is what's called a final appealable order. So if someone disagrees with that order, their remedy is then to appeal the decision and go to one of the courts, superior or circuit. It used to be circuit that might have changed. They might be able to go to any court. So when they appeal the decision, the first thing the judge is going to look at is your findings of fact. That's your order. That's like your court order. So according to the statute that's cited in 36749185, which is listed on here, the statute actually has three categories that must be met. We have a fourth one on here, which is number three, which is not in the statute. I don't know at what point when that got added, but you know, I do think we have the right to add it. But one, two, and four are specifically listed by statute. So what that means is when you approve or deny, you have got to conclude that to deny one of these four is not present. In other words, one of these four is not met, then you could deny because all four need to be met. So what I think is helpful and what I used to do when I was a commissioner, we had these same forms and as commissioner, we needed to do the same thing. Also, when I was on area plan, we always made notes under each one, which facts stuck out to us. On number one, the approval will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. What did we hear in the hearing that made us think that's okay or that's not okay? And then you do that for each one of them. And I think what would be really helpful is if everyone did that as the hearing was going on, and then it looks like Mr. Hartman went ahead and did it for everyone. But if he had everyone's thoughts, then he wouldn't have to go off his memory and try to recreate what happened at that hearing. So, um, so that's done then, and in this case, Mr. Hardman, it looks like, took care of that. So what you will then do, you would then vote on that and whatever majority deny or approve to approve these findings of fact, that becomes our final order. And then if someone wants to appeal that decision, they go to court and obviously we want the decision to be valid. So. The more notes we have under each one of these on whether we approve or deny, it just makes our case that much stronger when we go to court. Does that make sense to everyone? Does that help? Um, these are actually really important, especially if someone wants to appeal it, because this is the first thing the judge is going to look at. Same thing in every court. So I hope that helps. <laughs> Okay, is there any further motion discussion? to discuss your findings of fact? Well, if uh, <laughs> if we're ready to close discussion and move forward with this, do you want to discuss any of these points? I'm no, I think open to that. We've been there before and we uh, discussed it uh, previously when we had this issue, so yeah. I think we're clear. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and uh, someone like to make a motion? I'll make the motion. That we approve the finding of fact as written. And do we have a second? I'll second there. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Adkins and a second by Mrs. Jones. Would you give us a roll call, please? Adkins? Yes. How? Yeah. Jones? Yes. Wong? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Okay, motion passed. Okay, we have no old business or new business. And we've taken care of the discussion on findings of facts. And let's uh, move on to reviewing our rules of procedure. Okay. All right. I took another look at these and uh, went through them and there was some things that we have to tidy up a little bit. 
And uh, before we can move on, uh, page two. The board midway down, the board may also require the owner of the parcel to make a written commitment concerning the use or development of that parcel for IC 3674921. Um, now, we had removed that same uh, phrase and uh, in another place in our rules. Okay, so the question is, we don't actually do that. We do not require a written commitment concerning the use or development of a parcel when someone comes in for a variance or special exception. Now, um, what we normally do is put it in the motion. And that that uh, is a condition of the approval then. And and we have done that. Now, I believe this this is still in state code. At least when I checked on the state website in the past month. It was still there, so we do not have to remove it. I don't believe that it has been taken out by the state. So I think it is still uh, possible that we could leave it in. We just need to decide on that. So is there any discussion on that? If we leave it in, um, that's that's a difficult point. If we put it in as a condition of approval, but someone doesn't want to sign a written commitment right then, what kind of a position does that put us in? Would we then? Uh, not pass the uh, petition. Do you have an opinion on this, David? Yeah, I was looking up the code. Um, it says may, so you don't have to do it. I look at it maybe as a situation might arise where it might be helpful, but it's certainly not required because of the word may. Mm -hmm. So, I personally don't think it hurts anything to have that in there. I think if a special circumstance arises and you want that, you've got that language in your rules to cover you if you want to do that. So, I personally don't don't think it hurts anything to have it in there myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you can see, the line right above, the board may impose reasonable conditions as yeah, which I think part of any approval to have, and I'm sure you probably yeah. do that from time to time. That one we do, right? Um, we have imposed conditions before, yeah. Um, but as far as making a written commitment and requiring that, I have not seen us take that step. Um, how would we know when to request that? That be an after the fact thing? I, it's too late, isn't it? If I would you've think the passed or denied, or it, yeah. if you don't mind, I, I would think it might be something that if a special situation comes along, maybe the office might say, "Hey, we might want to get this writing." Maybe you're concerned that somebody's coming in and getting this. Maybe they don't end up doing it, but you've already granted it. Um, I think it might probably be a rare circumstance. But I think it's something that you would decide just as you decide what conditions to put on. Uh, maybe after listening to the public speak what their objections are, maybe something would come up that you might want this in writing from them because it does bind them. If this is a commitment, you know, you put that in your order that they've made this commitment 
And so it is binding on them to follow through with whatever's in there, whatever's in that commitment. That's why I don't think it hurts to have it in there. Uh, and you would do it as part of uh, before you issue your order, probably put it in in your findings of facts, whatever you find under the four terms, then add special uh, under the part above reasonable conditions. And then if you decide it was necessary, attach that written commitment as an exhibit to the order. I think it's one of those things where actually when it's occurring and we're discussing whether or not we want to make a condition of approval, that we would ask the petitioner, are you willing to sign a written commitment to do this condition of approval? And if they say no, then that may affect your decision. If they were to say yes, certainly, then you could go ahead and move forward with your approval. And the office could draft that and get their signature on it. Would that have to go through like a, an ordinance? A what? Like we get a written commitment with the Area Planning Commission. I've got to move that forward to the commissioners for approval. Would this be the same? It's an order. I think it would be attached as an order as part of the order here. So I wouldn't think so. No, I wouldn't think so. As long as we're following the code. Yeah. I see code. Yeah. Yeah, we would still want to follow the one right above it. As well. Okay. Um, well, if we require that written commitment, then would we delay the persons that would want to be moving forward and have to come back to another meeting? Or would there be a form? If we knew in advance, we'd be it, prepared. But you had a form in the office. Like a written agreement for the Area Planning Commission. We've got one right now for the slaughterhouse out by Madison Grant. Uh, that is to them at this point, and they've got to fill it out, have it notarized, all that good stuff, and get it back to me so that I can certify it to the commissioners. But there's rezoning involved with that too. So that's why. This, this wouldn't really be changing the ordinance, so it wouldn't be a legislative body yeah. plan. If I may, I'll throw one more thing out there. I just checked, and that section actually has been repealed from the code. So um, it's something you probably still could do, but I don't want to say it's required by statute because it looks like it was repealed as of 2022, unless they and came back in this year, which I can't speak on that either way. Maybe Mr. Hartman was looking at a very new version, um, but the most recent one I could find is 2022. That that well, was in there prior, so I mean, that wasn't even one that we had highlighted at the last meeting, so that's, that was in there when we started. Well, that, yeah, that was the one we took out in another place. Yeah. Um, so, so how long has that been in place? Many years? Can you tell when that was? We don't have a date at the end of Because I, I had a, a 17 or, or statute. It wasn't in in 17 either. And it wasn't in a 22 version. So <laughs> Unless we it was... took it out on page one. Yeah. Where it was in there before as 2.1.1.5. And, uh, we removed that, and I remember the committee uh, thought that it had been removed. When I went back this last month, mm -hmm. I found that in there. Which yeah. I thought, I thought before that was gone. Yeah. So, so I, if you know, wanted to keep it in, it's certainly not required anymore. I would certainly strike the. I would put a period after parcel if you wanted to keep in, but it's not required. So it's it's very much up to what you folks want to do. 
but we can still do it whether it's in there or not. Uh, yeah, I think you can. I think I think it's under the same lines as the part above. Same logic, excuse me. Need a motion to remove it? Yeah, I think we need a motion either way. Well, if you do the impose a reasonable condition, when you do that, you're including that in the variance. And so therefore, the language there in written is already in written because it's part of the it's part of the variance that we've agreed to. I would say the vast majority of the time that would be correct. Yeah. And so that's why I think this is a very it, it would have to be an unusual situation for that to even come up. I'd be in favor of getting rid of all the verbiage that we can get rid of. Okay. We have a motion to remove the uh, written commitment on page two. By Mr. Howe, do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Mrs. Jones. Any further discussion? We have a motion. Just removing that the written the written part. The written commitment. Yes. yes. Okay. May we have a roll call vote? No. We'll. We, we were doing these by simple, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> I guess it's been a while since we did this, huh? Okay. All right, we can check that one off. Uh, down, one line down, 2.1.3. Uh, this has been changed. From what it was previously. So we need to look at this and uh, determine do we want to want to accept this change? Okay, this yeah. Ryan changed this. It's slightly different than what we had in there before. It does follow state code. But we did not vote on this change before. This is the first time it's in there. It, it was previously a long paragraph. It was previously a long paragraph with different, some different wording. But this is the state code. That is state code. As I read through it, that's that's a pretty simple decision. Then I think so. Any discussion on that? Okay, this should normally go through our normal process, be presented as an amendment, and be voted upon. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Okay, do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. We have a motion to approve this change. Do we have a second? By Mr. Howe. I'll second that motion. We have a second by Mr. Pearson. Any further discussion? We have a roll call vote. Oh, sorry again. It's not. It's not normal. But let's go. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, that passed as well. <laughs> now we have made a few changes on this page, and our normal process. We were taking a roll call vote for the page in its entirety. We have a roll call vote. Thank you. Atkins. Yes. Howe. Yes. Jones. Yes. 
Long. Yes. Pearson. Yes. Okay. That page is passed. Okay. Page three. Midway down 3.1.3, we missed the word any plan commission member. Should say any BZA member receiving a majority of votes shall be elected chairperson. Sorry, where are you at? 3.1.3, third line. Okay. Okay. I think they may have the corrected ones. Yeah, that's that you, you may have the corrected. Yeah, you. Okay. Well, you and I went through and did. I All right. What Brenda did. Okay, so. Zoning member. Yeah. All we need is a roll call. Uh, I mean, all we need is a motion to approve that change since we didn't vote on it before. So move to make change to 3.1.3. Okay, do we have a second? Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Atkins and a second by Mrs. Jones. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay. Um, don't have any other changes on this page. Let's have a roll call vote to approve page three. Atkins? Yes. Oh. Yes. Say no. Yes. Oh, sorry. Jones? Yes. Long? Yay. Pearson. Yes. Appreciate it. I'm kind of back. Okay. <laughs> that page is cleared. Okay. Um, page four, board staff, 3.3 board staff. At the end of it, it refers to IC 36749919. And, uh, this uh, doesn't, uh, that doesn't fit. Um, we need to probably remove that reference. This, you know, the paragraph talks about the staff, including designating attorney shall serve as staff to the board and director shall be designated executive of the staff. Director shall be delegated authority to perform administrative acts and cases, except where final action of the board is necessary. The executive director shall be responsible for keeping an accurate record of all board proceedings, including the keeping of the records of minutes and the custody and preservation of all papers and documents of the board, the maintenance of a current roster and qualifications of members and record of attendance shall provide the board with information pursuant to IC 36749919. Um, that's, that's uh, I don't know, it doesn't apply there, um, not in that section, so. We need to uh, actually vote on removing that 36749919 since it's the wrong site there I don't and move it where oh just remove it oh uh, just remove just, it yeah <clears throat> So what you're saying is, is the, the reference to information pursuant to that Indiana code. Yeah, this, this section 919 uh, talks about an appeal to the BZA, which that really didn't apply in the previous paragraph. So I'm just saying, okay, the rule is all fine here as it's written, 
but the site of 36749.19 is just put a period after incorrect, which is, we just need to take it out. Okay. Okay. Um, Need a motion? Yeah, I need a motion. Make a motion that, or I make a motion that we remove IC 36 day, 7 days for H919. Where do you want your period? Um, I think after information. More of information, period. Yeah. Um, now, do we have a second? We have a motion from Mr. Adkins. I'll second. And we have a second from Mrs. Jones. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay. Um, that concludes the changes on page four. Do we have can we have a roll call vote to approve page four? Atkins? Yes. How? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Pearson. Yes. Okay. Page four is set aside. Okay. Um, page five. Uh, five point one application. First line: All petitions not initiated by the board shall require application with. The Board of Zoning Appeals staff. It says from, we change that to with. And that's on ours. And yours is already corrected here. Okay. And second line 21 days, we had specified three weeks. Okay. And the example that we had talked about is sometimes there's confusion when you just say days. People are wondering, is it calendar days? Is it business days? What is it? But when you say weeks, that's, that's non-confusing, so to speak, uh, more definite. Okay, and that was the reason for that change that we'd made. So we're changing 21 days to three weeks. Three weeks was what we had in there. Okay. And then another little change was at the top of the page 4.3 executive session. The Indiana code site is 5 dash 14 dash 1.5 dash 6.1. Okay, now. We need a motion on the 6.1 to correct that. Would anyone like to make a motion on that? change at the top of page five, changing the site to at the end 6.1. I'll make a motion to. We have a motion from Mr. Pearson. Do we have a second? I'll second. No second from Mrs. Jones. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, we'll check that one off. Um, need a motion to correct those small typos in paragraph 5.1.1 from with, from to with, and three weeks. 
and it's already corrected in your. I'll make that motion. We have a motion from Mr. Adkins for that change. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second from Mrs. Jones. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed, same sign. Okay. All right, then we need a roll call vote to approve page five. Atkins? Yes. Al? Yes. Jones? Yes. Mom? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Okay, page five is complete. Page six, nothing there. Unless anybody found anything else, if you found anything else, chime in at any point. Page eight just has a little typo that in the uh, and it's fixed in your copy, but we had never fixed it before. So we need to approve it and it is on the third line and his and his or her and his was in twice in the previous uh, version that we did not see and fix. So where are you at Ed? It's on 6.3.4, the third line, okay. and your copy is corrected. It only has and his in there one time now. I called that one in. Okay. So we, but it was in our original, and we approved this page. So we need to uh, make a motion to remove the one and his, just a typing error. Uh, do we have a motion to correct? So moved. We have a motion by Mr. Howe. Do we have a second? Second. By Mr. Adkins. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. I uh, believe that's all the changes on page eight. We have a roll call vote to approve page eight. Adkins? Yes. Howe? Yes. Jones? Yes. Wong? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Okay, page eight, it's done away with. Page nine is corrected on your sheet. Um, on the, mine, it said open public discussion. So we wanted that to be open public comment. We need a motion to make that change. This is 6.5.6. .6. I'll make the motion to make that change to 6.5.6. .6. Okay, Mr. Adkins. For a motion, do we have a second? I'll second. Mrs. Jones. For second, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, so then page nine. That's all we found. Uh, can we have a roll call vote to make an approval of page nine? Atkins? Yes. Powell? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Okay, page nine is complete. Okay. Page 10. Okay, 6.6.10, 6 middle of the page, bottom of that paragraph, it is corrected on your copy now. 
at the beginning of the line, it reads item is agreed to. And it said be a majority, but it is by a majority. So we're correcting that typo in the previous version. So we need a little motion to make that correction. Motion. We have motion by Mr. Pearson. Second. We have a second by Mr. Adkins. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, I believe that's all the changes on page 10. Can we have a roll call vote for page 10? Atkins? Yes. How? Yes. Jones? Yes. Wong? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Okay, page 10 is complete. Nothing mm -hmm. on page 11. Page 12. It is now corrected. 7.2.21. Last line Board of Zoning Appeals was Land Commission. So we need to have a motion to make that correction. So move to make that correction to 7.2.2.1. We have a motion by Mr. Adkins. We have a second. We have a second by Mr. Pearson. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, can we have a roll call vote for page 12? Adkins? Yes. Howe? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Okay, page 12 is complete. Page 13. Seven, four, two, small typo in the third line used to say format record. T was changed to an L, making it now formal record. We need a motion to approve that correction. So we have a motion by Mrs. Jones. We have a second, second by Mr. Pearson. All in favor say aye. Aye. No other corrections found on page 13. Can we have a roll call vote for page 13? Atkins? Yes. Howe? Yes. Jones? Yes. Long? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Page 13 is completed. No corrections on page 14. Anything else from the board members on this? If not, you promised us last time we'll have to look at the. <laughs> uh, in reference, believe me, I'm ready to be uh, done with this, but of course, uh, there'll be a final document and there'll be a final quick review. Well, maybe it's not that quick, but there'll be a final review and uh, then we can uh, complete this project. Okay, thank you for uh, going through it all with us. Very good. Um, at this time, uh, we have completed our agenda. Does the board have any other business they'd like to discuss? Okay. If no other business amongst the board, we have a time for open public forum. So anyone from the public may address the BZA and uh, speak on questions or concerns that they have. Uh, 
normally it has to apply to what we do. Um, that, that's, uh, that's very helpful. Okay. Otherwise we can't help. All right. So at this time, we'll open this up. If anyone would like to speak to us, please come up, state your name and sign in at the podium. Name's Jerry Salt. I don't know if this is a time to question that I some questions I have if this is a place or not, but I well we'll find out. I'll get started here. You're certainly uh, allowed to come and speak. Um at this time you have the floor. Okay. And generally speaking, you address me and uh then uh, we'll proceed that way. And okay. uh, at this time, no one from the audience is allowed to uh, discuss anything you're discussing. It's your your time. Okay. Well, there's too much concerns about the zoning appeals on some property in Fairmount, the variance that was tabled in September or something, I don't remember. But since then, there's been some other actions as it happened that uh, the area plan has been involved with on the property and different things. Different things have transpired that there was some stuff said that by, by the area plan, by Mr. Malott, that the Surveyor was there and helped him put lines and stuff down to determine different things. The surveyor was not there. Mr. Malott was there with the town people from the town of Fairmount, Mr. Gossett, and there was somebody else, I don't know for sure who it was, that painted lines. And then they told us, then eventually we get a letter that says we have to move our rocks because they're in the property line. Over the property. Well, the survey, the lines that were down were not put by a surveyor. The town had removed our survey stakes in the front of the property. So we didn't, they didn't know where for sure where the alley was at. It had been replaced, but where the drawings show that our rocks were in the alley were not proper according to the surveys. Now, it's been an issue with this property all along, uh, but we were told to get a survey and they wouldn't approve the survey. They need to get another survey and they just keep pushing it around. We got a letter, a certified letter on our front porch while we were out of town telling us we had five days to move these rocks because they were in the alley with a picture. Well, I'd been in a hospital and we were out of town. I got back and saw the front porch in the rain and we opened it up. There's no pictures, but it says we got five days to move it because they're in the alley. Well, surveyor was out of town, couldn't find out. And then we find out when he comes back, his surveyor was there today and the lines weren't correct. But the town has moved our boulders two feet since then, because they're going to take some trees down, supposedly unbeknownst to us. And my question is, one of the questions is, how much authority does Mr. Lott and his group have? Do, are they surveyors? Can they detect property lines and put down survey lines and say this is what's right and what's not? Or, or why do we have surveyors? That we pay to do this stuff and put the marks in. And it's just been a push and shove for for quite a while. It's time for it to end. But the property in question is still 
either on the property line or over the property line into the alley. But I keep getting different comments and stuff and pictures from the area plan office that says it's not. It's from a surveyor. And a surveyor does not agree that he had any part of that. So, like I said, I don't know if it's the BZA board that I need to talk to, or if I need to talk to Area Plan Commission, or who to find out what kind of authority. Does Mr. Lamont have authority to go on somebody's private property and do stuff? Uh, we started to put up a fence. And we were told that uh, there's no no setbacks or anything, and we could put it up as long as they're our property. First day, Mr. Mallott sends somebody over, and Nicole Bailey comes over and puts a stop work order on our fence. It's on our property, but put a stop order. And the week before, we were told he had no control over it, it was up to the town. If he has no control over it, how can he put a stop order on my fence, our fence, and make us stop and let all the work go on on the house next door that, that, that's not correct? I mean, I... I, I think that when it boils down to the fact is uh, Mr. Whitfield uh, needs to address his problems. I think and, you're uh, correct. Yes. And that, I can't hear what she said. Uh, I, I'm, what I'm saying is, I think Mr. Clickfield, our attorney, he needs to address your problem because, uh, for, as far as Mr. Malat is concerned, um, I don't know if that's in his, uh, is that classification for, as of his job to do that? He's not a surveyor, so therefore he should not be putting down any lines well, doing the job of a Mike, surveyor. Can, can I respond? I, no, no, just a minute. Okay, hold on, hold on, please. hold on. So we, we don't want him doing a surveyor's job if he's not a certified surveyor, that's and, and there, that's correct. There is a question here. Um, yes. There was a third person you say that was there, but you don't know who it was. Mm -hmm. It was a town employee. Mm -hmm. a town employee. Surveyor. Okay. Now I talked to the surveyor today, and he said he wasn't there. Okay. But, just yeah, just a second, please. Um, who was the surveyor? You you were there. It, it, it was a it was a member of Randall Miller's. Here's the email, Ryan. We marked the alley for the city. We recorded both surveys, so both your survey and her survey were were corrected and re-recorded. Okay. That's directly from Randall Miller. Okay. Now, okay. So, so they. But he was not came. there. But Randall wasn't there. His associate was. He had they, someone else. Do we know they, who that person is? No. This is this is what okay. he sent me. Yeah, we had this. Yeah. We had a public hearing on this. Remember, and we tabled it. Lisa Craig's house. Mm -hmm. got, I've got to the alley. Mm -hmm. I've got another question. Yes. Randall Miller told me he was not there. I was talking to one of his employees, a guy named Ryan, that works for him. And he said, I was over there, but I was not there when they put the lines down. And he did not, he said, I did not approve anything. I didn't, I didn't do anything to there. He said, I talked to Mrs. Craig. But I did not talk to Mr. Mallott or anybody else. Okay. Now, uh, do do we have documentation from the surveyor saying whether he was there, who we sent there, and if we had that, we could. I talked. I talked to Mr. Miller, mm -hmm. and he's a busy person. He tells you that he'll be there, and then he doesn't. He sends one of his associates. Mm -hmm. And then he tells you, well, he told me they did a survey back in October on on Lisa Craig's property, but he can't find it. Okay. And there is no survey recorded or anything back then. Okay. So the only recorded there is no recorded survey for lot 309 North Main. Okay, so but our survey has been recorded. Now they're trying to tell me they might try to change it. Mr. Mallott made a somebody made a suggestion that the town might give her six more inches of property so she's inside the property line. Well this should have never got this far if the area plan would have done her inspections and done the stuff properly to start with. The permit was first issued 
with no drawing, no sketch. I went into the area plan office in April and asked about it. And they said, oh my gosh, that shouldn't have been all issued. A certain guy issued that and he's on, on suspension now, but there's no sketches. And then mysteriously, two or three days later, I go back and they show me a sketch that's part of the permit, but the sketch has nothing, it's not even correct because the sketch shows it seven feet off the property line running parallel with the alley. And indeed, the house is within three inches of the alley, three or four inches of the alley, and then their deck was past it. And it shouldn't have never been, it should have never gotten that far. Okay. But it just kept going on and on and on, and it just keeps, okay. it keeps snowballing. Okay. Well, and well, well, my issue is the fact is that uh, my issue is the fact is that if Mr. Malott is doing the job of a surveyor, that's my issue. No, he's, he's he's not a certified surveyor. I didn't His survey job. Nothing. Okay. Well, we're just, we're, okay, we're gonna we're gonna wait, and and we're gonna make sure. That he's doing his job as the director and the qualification that come with that, not a surveyor, not a line drawer, but we, uh, we want Mr. Glitfield to jump in there and give some kind of legal I, I, uh, information I understand to that. And that yeah. was, that was that that's 1 of my questions. Because I have a field camera over there over there because there's been several issues mm -hmm. and the day in question. Mr. Mott was there, Ryan Gossett was there, another guy from the city, and the surveyor was not there when they were there. The surveyor walked in later, and because I didn't even know who he was until today, I went to Randy Miller's office, and I said, oh, are you Ryan? And he said, yeah. And I said, did you go over and help Mallott and him put the marks down on that property over there? And he said, no. He said, the marks were made at what? Lines were painted when I got over there. So, it's he said, she said, but Ryan today in the office said he did not talk to Ryan Malott. He talked to to the owner, but he didn't talk to them and he didn't help put the lines down. They were there when he got there. Now, the lines in question that they're showing me, it shows my property was off. It came from the Police department. After Mr. Lot was over there, and I finally got a copy of the town's the survey that the town had mm -hmm. by Mr. Ashton. I'd like to send this picture around if I can. Yes, mm -hmm. go ahead. I got this from the police department today, along with a copy of the letter. It was never certified and delivered to me. It shows these, this, this stake and one back in the middle was not put in by a surveyor. They were put in by somebody else and they're, they're three or four inches south of our actual property line. <laughs> when I found a stake, found it, the survey stakes today. Okay. The line was down, when the line was there, to, that's one of the other problems. Okay. And three or four inches. Three or four inches south of our, from north of our property line on the now, south side. Now, do you have the original uh, plat that shows your property line? Uh, that's here in that should be here in the. What? Record. It should be here in the recorder's office. That the original plat that shows your property line. Yeah, it's, I've got yes. it. I, I showed it a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. when I was here. In, in this, Just... Well, who's throwing the string? Yeah, who, who, who's doing? They were there doing this morning with Ryan Gossett. Mm -hmm. They they painted it up. I was on my way over there, but Joanne called me and said she wanted me over there. I got over there with Ryan, and we went up and down. We took pictures up and down the alley. Randy Miller. Yeah, that same rock. Emailed me and said we marked the alley for the city. This is from Randall Mill. I will re-record both surveys. Sorry about the confusion, Randall. Now, do they have documentation of him doing the survey? 
Where's that? Yeah, at? I've got three three surveys. And he has yeah, which pass those surveys or your help? property. Send it there. I was at this property. And why are they continuing to work here, on that part when they're here? A copy of the survey. Why are they continuing to work on that property? It's on their property. It's already been identified as a Okay. So they wanted to get a variance. Okay. But when I was out there, there were some people working on uh, construction. So why are they continuing to work on the porch or whatever until we get this issue straight now? Okay, so um, this pan may still be there. It's too many still. I have another question, Ryan. Uh, why are these people continuing to be able to work on this porch or whatever it is until we get this this issue straightened out? Why are they continuing to work? I, uh, I was out there and they were working um, on that porch or whatever it was and they were doing it and they were continuing and if, if you've got this issue here they shouldn't be doing anything until you get this issue stopped or find out what's going on here well they were about half of the way done when this become an issue if you remember they had they had moved to this bill had they came in did they come in before they start building well, if if the survey is correct and it's all on its own property line, the property to begin with is considered non-conforming, uh, which is allowed uh, to add on to. If they're within the property line, we see it as non-conforming legal. Okay. The town board uh, the town board agreed uh, with the latest survey and the correction that got sent in. So they they we issued a temporary queue. Once we had the measurements done, we issued the final. So they they've got a certificate occupancy. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's that's kind of funny because when I talked to the town marshal today, he said he said it's still an ongoing issue. And John yeah. Tre John Treon did not tell me that it was final. So I, they they consider the matter closed right now. They are dealing with the right of way issue. And that is that your watch so they don't come back and move the survey over. No, they're not. Somebody There's moved them two feet. Uh, uh, somebody boy, moved them in the side of the property. I don't know. I don't know. Over I don't know but, but somebody yeah. did. Somebody, somebody did. did. It was an area plan. So you well, have steps there. And then it's, it's, according to the area plan, they were three inches in, over the property line and they're moved before anybody knows whether the hell they were or not. So, according to what Paramount told me, they sent two certified letters, and when they got no response to it, they got it marshaled. Yes. That was on the town board meeting. They, I just talked to the town marshal, but he didn't. He said the first one's lost. When somebody was applying for it, I talked to him today, and he said the second one, you don't know where it's at. And I said, I do know where it's at. I said, somebody put it on my front porch when I was on vacation. And I come back and sitting there in the rain, well, like and I, I said, find it on Tuesday morning. And I get ready to dress it. My surveyor is out of town. The plat show, which you know, you're right, non-conforming because I didn't get it. So, I mean, it's, it's like I told him, I'm not hiding from him. I never got my telephone number. Everybody wants to call me and talk to him about anything. I'll talk to him. I'm not going to play hide and seek with anybody over any damn thing. Somebody else's property to do what you always been that way. Yeah, I came down the right. wrong okay. Over I have a question. So saying, yeah. On your northeast corner, point one is listed as a hollow pipe and it's in good condition at grade. Have you located that spike? Right. Northeast corner. Can, can I come back there and look at that copy? What one are you looking at? Yeah, I'm at? looking at the Ashton survey. Just a minute. I've got, I That's think right. I've got another copy right here. Okay. It's a less than 90 degree angle between no, the streets. And it's point number one there. It lists as a hollow, that would be pipe, in good condition. Now, what are you saying, number two? Yep, number one, point one. 
It's on the corner of your property northeast. Town, yes. Okay. How about number eleven? It's listed as rebar, good condition at grade. Yes. Number eleven on the northeast corner. Northwest. Northwest corner. Correct. Both of those are locatable. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then you could actually run a line from one of those to the other. And your boundary line here on the west shows a distance of 132 feet, and it shows that on both surveys. Right. That doesn't seem to be in dispute. So even if this pin is gone here on the south corners, if they're gone, but let's assume that they're there still, two you said may be gone because of the work that was done there. Number two was on the east south southeast corner of your property. Number five may still be there. That's in the middle of your property on the south. Okay. Number six still there or not. Number six is a mag spike. We found we found number six today. Well, I, I had the surveyor back over there good today. Okay. And we located all of them, and they are, they're, they're correct where they need to be now. But when whoever put these lines down, number mm -hmm. two, they couldn't find number two apparently, and they went about four inches on our north, on our property line, and they started painting an orange line down through here. It doesn't follow any damn thing. Okay, so somebody, and that's how they decided it. They sent me a letter, two certified letters, I guess. The mm -hmm. second one, the postmaster or somebody took the thing off the back of it. I didn't sign for it, and they just put it on my front porch. We okay. don't use the front porch, but anyhow, we found. Yes. So anyway, number six and five, still being there, give you a good point of reference for where the alley is. And measuring down 132 feet from the north property line, which you could establish by those two pins on the north. We did. We did. 132 feet down would give you the location of where that spike number two should be, even though it's not there any longer, you say. And that should be able then to line up those three points and definitely say where the alley is. The alley is to be 10 feet wide. So you can measure across and establish the line on the other side as well of the alley. That was that was done. That was done again today. Okay. So where did you where did, and the surveyor was there? You say where did this end up? The surveyor was there today and showed me where my marks are mm -hmm. and there where my rocks were. When, when they moved them, I can't see that they were inside the property line, but I don't know for sure because they've been moved. The only thing I could find was an orange line painted three or four inches north of my, of my where the survey stake was back in, which the surveyor put back in. And so I. Part of the. Part of the question is also if area plan doesn't have any control over that alley or the right of way of the alley, it belongs to the town. Why did somebody put a stop order on my fence, our fence, and make us stop and let everything continue on the next door? When they knew there were issues both places, but they decided. And I was told by the area plan earlier that he wouldn't want us to do it, but he had no control belonged to the town. Then after we start putting a fence up, they run right over there and put a stop order on it. Now somebody's taking the stop order down, I don't know who, but my posts are still inside my property line. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the setback from the alley should be seven feet as we've heard. Okay, right? Right. We thought it was seven. We For thought, we thought it was seven, but now it's five. Are we sure? Yeah. Okay, it's five. Okay, so 
That's for a structure. Yeah, they, right? they projected seven foot off and the requirement was five. Okay. And the requirement is five. Right. Okay, so that's Fairmount Code. Mike, feet. that's that's our your code. that's us. That's us figuring it out. Okay, now is there any setback for a fence? It is generally two foot off. Doesn't six foot or less doesn't require a permit. Six what, foot or less in height. Doesn't right, doesn't require a permit. We generally ask that it be two foot off the property line. One of the one of the reasons that we have here is we basically choked an alley and created a safety issue. So we ask. We, we don't we, have, we, we don't have, have a stuff. requirement. We don't have a requirement for two feet for a fence. Yes. We and do in our yards and setbacks. We ask that, that it be two foot off property lines. Because I mean people built fences on the property line. And, and we just went through and did a new ordinance all on place. setbacks that was not even a year ago uh, as far as encroaching. Just on set on into the right of way. Okay. So over, over rocks yeah. on another property. Now the ten feet includes the right of way in this alley, is that correct? Right. Okay. And so the fence should be two feet from the right of way is yeah. in, in this fight. in this case, Mr. Soltz had put a truck, a trailer, and started putting fist, fence posts up so that there was no way to get a fire truck, an ambulance, or any kind of emergency vehicle down an alley. Well, you know, frequently housing divisions are built with no alley at all, mm -hmm. and emergency equipment uses the road. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that that's a big problem, but a two feet setback, if that's a requirement, sounds reasonable. Mm -hmm. But I mean, fire trucks, a lot of times they use the road, right? In a housing division that has no alley, they got to use the road. So you can't, I'm we, not sure what they but Do you know by law, can you, in alley, can you block alleyways off so that emergency vehicles can't access? No. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, can you drive down a 10 foot alley? Yeah. Apparently we think so because we set yeah, it up with that right away. But when we've got it down to about seven foot with rocks poking out into it, mm -hmm. it makes it a little bit more difficult. Down to seven foot, really? I, I didn't measure it was to the point I couldn't get my truck in there without hitting the side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there's an issue it sounds like on the south side then as well. The, the reason it's down to seven feet is because there's two trees that are in, in that there. alley also. Yeah. And when all this was going on, Craig's contractor had a hole dug beside her house sticking out into the alley about three feet, about three or four feet deep, and they left it forever until they ended up getting her sewer and stuff hooked up. I don't know for sure, but it was it was left an open hole there, and that choked the alley down too. And the reason we put trucks on that on our property line was they told us to get it surveyed. We did. And then we put up temporary stakes and the contractor and everybody just kept running over them, kept driving over on the property anyhow. So, yes, we took some vehicles over there and parked them, licensed vehicles and parked them on our property line. Mm -hmm. Then the town of Fairmount. They're not, they're, there's no ordinances and there is the town says they do not have an ordinance on fence setbacks or stuff set back on their alley. There are no setbacks. Now, if there is now, it's, it's unbeknownst to me. Mr. Lott said he would, he would like for it to be two feet, but it's not, it doesn't have to be. So him liking and what actually happened has to happen. There's two different things. I mean, if, there's a lot of things I'd like to have done too that, that don't happen. But you have to you have to go with what's fair for everybody and not just some people. Yeah, obviously we have a, an unusual situation when you have a house that has been there a long time, right at the edge of an alley. That that is unusual. Um, but that's that's the situation you're dealt with. And the alley and the right of way is set up for 10 feet. Now, the part about the line changing, I understand your concern. Um, and oh. 
if you want to appeal this decision to the BZA, you would need to fill out the form that the area plan office has, and you could bring that appeal did, did, to us. Did the BZA approve the setback for her property? It's never come before. No, we, we tabled that. It, it was tabled, yes. yes. And that's, but, but understand it's Fairmount, the town of Fairmount right now that he's dealing with, not us. Well, we need to discuss that a little more in that uh, the variance for that building, we need to complete that work. Because we said when we tabled it, if the property line was no longer in dispute and not a problem, then we could hear a petition for the variance, finish it. She's already well, put one on it, file. If it was with Hold on, I'm speaking. We would finish that variance because now the setback is five feet. According to the way I read the code, the variance, we could go down to two and a half feet without a variance, but the setback is five feet, not four inches, not six inches. The setback doesn't change when you build on a non-conforming structure, not the way I read it. Now, if somebody else, Mr. Glickfield, if you feel that that's an error, um, then we well, probably need to talk about it, that. If he's also looking at the other house, I think the and they're trying to bring we would have to give a variance. See, that's another issue for her to be in good standing yes. on that property, yes. um, just a few inches off of new construction. The house is old and they're updating it. I they think that could be a problem with a grandfather. Uh, well, issue the is, and we'll that's need to discuss it because, as far as non conforming structures go, it, it, it doesn't ask for the BCA's recommendation. It, it, the BZA wouldn't make a recommendation. Right. The BZA the would either approve a variance or deny a variance. And the office can determine non conforming legal. What's that? The office can determine non conforming legal structures. Well, that is, that decision could be appealed as mm -hmm. well. But it has nothing by this to do with his right away. What's that? It has nothing to do with his right away. Okay. We that's, also that's need fair. documentation that the Mm -hmm. that the right of way and the variance for a fence is two feet. Mm -hmm. And we need to get the property line settled before we get into it anymore at all. Mm -hmm. So not our issue. it's not my issue on the property line, right. but it is our issue if you want to appeal decisions made by the office. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. By, okay. by the area plan office. By the area plan office. Mm -hmm. Okay, where do I get those petitions? Uh, he'll give you the form. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not like he sent me the letter telling me that it was, it was going to petition. He was going to try to get a revariance, the zoning revariance that they did. I never received. Never received a letter telling me that it was getting a property reason. We tried to get a bearing for the property. I never got anything in the mail. Part of his letter. Huh? Part of his letter. Which part? Yeah, three surveys in time. I don't know. Mr. President, can we clear up the survey issue real quick? Yeah. I don't, I don't know, know if we can. Yeah. I'm willing to try. Not, It'll not. take me about 30 seconds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, is, uh, we absolutely should not be in surveys. It sounds like we did not do a survey. We should not be marking out. Sure. Let's let the surveyor do all that. Yeah. Let's leave all that up to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. for these exact reasons, and yeah. I don't think we did it anyway. But he asked that question, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to make sure we have an answer well, to that. Yeah, uh, the property line is not us. It's not our bailiwick. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you this: Do you think that it was in, in Ryan's uh, role to go with Fairmount called him to get involved in this? You know, it would be his role once a survey is established to see what the situation is to see if he has any involvement in it. Does that answer your question? We got he's, we got to know where the boundary lines are first. Um, ideally, you have a recorded survey. We start there, right? And that's where we should start. 
So if, if this was to occur again, it would be maybe in the office's best interest to make sure that the surveyors there to represent the document that yes. needs made. Mm -hmm. It would be in the person applying for the variance's best interest yeah. to make sure that surveyor's there. Surveyor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. If that helps. So, and again, the information I had from Randa Miller was they put the two surveys together. Got it corrected and re-recorded both up. And I also okay. have seen that email because I was and, copied on that. Yeah. So as far as we know, I was it. correct when I was there. And we have to go that, by what he says. That, well, I guess what I'd recommend to you is to be an observer and not a participant. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think that's probably what happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, the right, the right exactly. way is a town of Paramount. It's not. It's not area plan. Sending him letters. Okay. Anyway, it's a town okay. of Paramount. I and I don't state that for our best interest. Yeah. Be an observer, not yeah. participant. Yeah. I think I think for a public employee like Mr. Lott is to tell me that if I take that sign down, he's gonna find me five hundred dollars, but don't worry about it, you can afford it. I think that's a, a public official getting paid by the taxpayers should not be able to talk to a taxpayer that way. He shouldn't say something like that to the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I've got questions, don't don't tell me that if you do something, I'm going to find you five hundred dollars, whether you like it or not. That's, so, so could he almost so feel. If I came off that way, I apologize. But as you know, you have sat in my office for four or five hours and we've talked. Yeah, but you did. You you come off that way, and I said, why why? And you said, we just put it there because we because of. And if you take it down, I'm going to find you five hundred dollars. And then you said. But don't worry about it. You can afford it. It's just like they tell me get a survey that I spend thirty five hundred dollars or four thousand dollars for, and then all of a sudden they, well, we got to get another survey. Somebody else has got to do something different. Well, it's a recorded survey, and the surveyor's all in the recorder's office, but yet it it's got to prolong to where it just continues and continues and continues. It's got to stop some damn time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. Okay, um, again, we need to be careful when we issue permits that we check. If something looks questionable, like it's very close, we should check it out more carefully. At this time, I would like to have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll say. All in favor say aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. I saved my chair. That, that, didn't, oh, that didn't sit too well with me because to me, when, when he, when he, touched, he said, he get the people to serve everything. That's the moment. What's up, Stephen? Oh, David. Excellent. Good, good, good. Do well yourself. Together for a gas. Well, yeah, for me, Tom. What are you talking about? This is Oh, you're not talking about that. Oh, that's not long, is it? I've got more announcements than anything. Can I do them first? Well, I just Thank you.
You know, what we're saying is that you're over here. Both of you actually. Yes, you're right. You want to make this This is very hard to take it on. Stay with me here. Go along. Go I don't think you're right here, and we don't have to worry about people walking around with it. Are you going to go back to that here? Okay. Okay. So you got your glasses back? I did, so you can... Oh, yeah, after that, I was... I get it. So... So I come back for week two and deserve this, right? Yeah, you know, he's gone. Which one I suppose. Yes, that will rest on what you did. I forgot. Huh. Excuse me, baby. Hey, Brian. I didn't get a packet this month. I got an electronic one. I didn't get one in the mail. Should I have one in the mail? Put a table there. Could you guys? Uh, okay. That is okay. So weird. Well, we just wonder. I got the next one. Here we go. I didn't know how Brian was. I got the wall of Brian in the chair. Hi. Since fall. Yeah, I'm, and I've, I've gotten one before. This is the first time. That way? <laughs> that yeah. This looks like a tight seat. No, that's bad. Like, yeah, that's right. One time, sort of two days after the meeting. Uh, very cold. Pending off this. I said, really, you'll say. Say, okay. Yeah. Three people. But that's, that's why we tried to email the two. Right. We have some members who don't have email. Right. So, we have extra packages. Um, extra packages for the ABC. I don't know. It's just so oh,